If homology doesn't provide evidence for the tree of life, what does? A second proof usually offered is the fossil record. According to most biology textbooks, fossils show the gradual development of life from simple to complex over hundreds of millions of years. But a growing number of scientists say that this textbook story is incomplete and even misleading because it ignores an extraordinary event in the history of life known as the Cambrian Explosion. The Cambrian Explosion is a term that refers to the geologically sudden appearance of all the major, or most of the major groups of animals uh, at about the same time, geologically speaking. Most geologists date the Cambrian Explosion at 530 to 520 million years ago. The Cambrian Explosion is a, a name given to a geologic event, really, the appearance in the fossil record over a period of about 10 million years or slightly less of a skeletonized fauna that includes uh, many living phyla for the first time. Animals with similar body plans are grouped together to form various phyla. Indeed, if you look at the tree of life, you can infer that nearly or all living phyla had evolved by the end of the explosion period. The Cambrian explosion has been called life's big bang, or at least animal's big bang, because uh, in the Cambrian explosion, most of the major forms of animals appear very suddenly in a geological sense. From nothing, we have almost everything, almost overnight, geologically speaking. This remains mysterious. Nobody really understands how this happened. The explosion is real in the sense that the fossils are real. There they are. Explaining it, however, is, is controversial. We're not sure uh, just how far back animals originated before the explosion or what the events were that led up to it. In Darwin's theory, if you think of the branching tree Darwin's branching tree, the common ancestor down here and the different modern forms of animals up here, you would have one form to begin with and then it would gradually diverge into slightly different forms and more and more different until you get the major differences that we see now. The problem with the Cambrian explosion is that all these major differences appear together at the same time with no fossil evidence that they descended from this common ancestor. you have a sudden emergence of new biological form and structure. And the suddenness of it defies the Darwinian mechanism's ability to produce new structure. Darwin believed that his mechanism must act slowly through small, gradual, incremental changes. And as a result, he expected to find many transitional, intermediate forms from the very simplest organisms to the first animals. Darwin knew about the Cambrian fossil record and he considered, considered it a, a serious problem for his theory. He hoped that future fossil collecting would fill in the gaps somewhat and uh, make the theory more plausible. But in fact, 150 years of continued fossil collecting have made the problem worse. Many more types of animals were involved than Darwin knew about. So it's actually more of an explosion now than Darwin thought it was. Most biology textbooks, however, supply little information about the Cambrian explosion, if they even mention it at all. My textbook gives a one sentence statement, just that there was this Cambrian explosion of life. But then it goes on to give a traditional Darwinian theory as to this slow, gradual evolving process. DeHart wanted to supplement the solitary sentence in the biology textbook with an article that appeared in the Boston Globe. The article reported on cutting-edge research by Chinese scientist J.Y. Chen 
an internationally respected paleontologist at the Nanjing Institute of Paleontology and Geology. Chin's discoveries in the fossil beds in Xinjiang, China, have rocked the scientific establishment. Located in the province of Yunnan in southern China, Xinjiang has some of the world's best preserved fossils from the Cambrian era. Darwinism helps them maybe only telling a part story for evolution. According to Chen, the fossils he's discovered turn Darwin's tree of life upside down. Darwin's tree, you know, uh, reverse conship, very unexpectedly, our research is convincing uh, major phylos starting down below at the beginning of Cambria. Base is white, gradually narrow. So this is almost uh, turned down a different way. I do not believe that animals developed gradually from the bottom up. I think the animals suddenly appeared. Among the Qingjiang animals, we have found 136 different kinds of animals, and they represent diversity in the level of phyla and classes. So the sudden appearance makes them very special. One view that many paleontologists hold is that though the phyla appeared suddenly during the Cambrian explosion, there must have been a long period of evolutionary development before that event. Some people believe that uh, it was a very rapid origin of these body plans. Other people believe that it was a long, gradual buildup to it, which I, which I think is probably right. But there must have been a prehistory in which it started at the bottom and worked up to the phyla. If there was a long history of evolution prior to the Cambrian explosion, there should be an abundance of transitional fossils. Or perhaps those animals were too small or soft-bodied to be preserved. The Darwinists have known since the 19th century that the Cambrian explosion did not conform to the picture of life that Darwin proposed. But one of their explanations for that was something called the artifact hypothesis, the idea that we were simply not sampling the fossil record sufficiently to find the missing transitional intermediates. In the strata just beneath the Cambrian fossil beds, we have a very favorable environment that would have preserved uh, ancestral forms of these animals had they existed. So one of the versions of the artifact hypothesis was the claim that we don't find these missing Precambrian animals because they were too small and they were soft-bodied. And what we now find in the Chinese fossils, in the beds just beneath the Cambrian explosion, are perfectly preserved soft-bodied tissues sponge embryos that are, of course, soft and microscopic. The new finds in the Chengjiang formations really completely put to rest the artifact hypothesis. If you can preserve an embryo, you can preserve an animal. And if those animals were there, then we should have found them. And they're not there. Some defenders of Darwin's theory argue that random mutations in a special set of genes called Hox genes are responsible for dramatically speeding up the evolutionary process during the Cambrian period. But what's interesting to me is that these genes are turned on late in development, long after the body plan is established. A fruit fly is already a fruit fly embryo before the Hox genes kick in. The same for a human, or a worm, or a starfish. So without a mechanism for sudden mutation, or a record of transitional fossils. Critics say Darwin's theory lacks the evidence it needs to account for the remarkable Cambrian explosion.